Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Um, today I am going to be furthering my adventure into 48 volt uh, off-grid systems. And in this part we are going to be looking at the GrowWatt all-in-one 48 volt inverter charger all-in-one system. I don't know what else to call it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put it on my bench. Um, as you can see, I still have the, uh, the EFG battery right there that we're going to be connecting to that inverter. Or that I guess I should say that all-in-one system. I, I've never worked with these before, so I don't even know what to call it. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open it up. It's right back there in that box. We're going to open it up. We are going to see what's inside. I believe I ordered it. I ordered it with my own money, too. I got it from uh, Signature Solar, and uh, they were, uh, you know, they got it to me within two days. It's amazing. So, um, but we're going to open it up. I ordered uh, the all-in-one inverter, and I believe I ordered a Wi-Fi uh, dongle to go along with it. So let's go ahead and open it up, see what it looks like, and see what all we got. Okay, here we go. I feel like I've had this grow lot for weeks. I think I've had it for, yeah, I've, had, I've probably had it for two weeks. And I'm finally opening it, so this is kind of exciting. All right, let's see what we got here. We have, up here we have, looks like all the wiring. Looks like a USB to, um, oh, I'm not, I can't remember what these ports are called. They're, uh, it's a USB to like, a, oh, that port in the back of a common printer, like a computer printer. I can't remember what those are called. And then it looks like we have a uh, DB9 cable. And then, um, I'm not sure what cables these are. I'll have to look at the manual to see all this. I've never even read anything about these things, so this is a brand new experience for me. Let's just set these here. Nothing else. There's this box right here. Ah, uh, here's the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi dongle right here. I feel like there's there's some manuals underneath here. Yep, here's a manual. Perfect. This will be some uh, light reading for tonight. And I think that's it. So let's go ahead and just try to get this thing out of the box. Oh, okay. Nice uh, thick styrofoam, kind of like what was in this, this battery. It's nice and thick. Nothing's gonna touch this inverter with all this foam around it. Beautiful, all right. Let's take, a, let's take a closer look at this thing. Okay, what we have here is the, this is the GrowWatt SPF 3000 TL LVM. Uh, it's an off-grid solar inverter. So it should be a solar inverter charger with a MPPT connection so I can connect solar panels to it. it should be an all-in-one unit. So the only things I will need is this inverter and this battery connected to each other and I will have a full system. Let's go ahead and look at it and see what we have. So here's the front and we have a display right here. Looks like it says uh, AC or INF. I'm not sure what that means. It looks like there's a charging light. Uh, there's also a fault light. So if there's any error codes, I'm guessing that lights up. And then there's four buttons. One's escape, up, down, and enter. So that seems pretty easy. And then there's some plastic covering it. I'll leave that on there for right now. Uh, on the bottom, here is our, uh, there's an AC input and an AC output. Uh, here are the parallel connections. So I'm guessing these little ports, that's what those wires are for. And it's probably so you can parallel connect uh, two grow watts together to make a, a true 240 connection. Uh, here's where our Wi-Fi dongle is gonna go. Uh, here is a USB port right here that we could probably connect to the computer. This, I'm not really sure what that is. We'll have to look at the manual for that. 
Uh, here are ports for the BMS and the RS-485. Uh, hopefully I can connect one of these to the battery and have these communicate to each other. Uh, here's the PV input. So that's where we're going to be putting our solar panels. And here is our DC inputs right here. So this is where the battery terminals are going to go. There are no markings on the outside to tell which one's positive and which one's negative. So we'll have to take this bottom, this bottom case off, which looks like it just has four screws to really see uh, what's going on. And then we have the on off switch right here. So let's go ahead and turn that off. So let's go ahead and unscrew this and we'll look inside. All right, oh look at that, it comes off nice and easy. Let's go ahead and look in there. All right, like I said before, here is our AC input right here and then our AC output is down there at the bottom. Oh, here's a circuit breaker right here. It's a 40 amp, looks like it's a 40 amp circuit breaker right here. Uh, yeah, here is the board for all the, uh, the Wi-Fi connection, the USB, and uh, this NC, C, N, O. Oh man, I wish I knew what those meant. Um, probably something closed, closed, something open, maybe? Uh, I'll have to read it, I'll have to find out. Uh, let's see. Underneath there is the parallel connections. And then, uh, yeah, it looks like there is the, uh, the positive over here and the negative terminals for, the, uh, for where the battery connect. And then the PV input is right here. And I need to find out. And then over, yeah, it's kind of nice. Over here it has, it has the symbols for ground, line, and neutral for the, uh, the input and the, and the output of the AC. So that's nice. And then there's two nice big fans to keep this thing cool. All right, looking at the side, here are all the specifications of this Growatt off-grid inverter. So like I said, the model is the SPF 3000 TL LVM 48P. Uh, it has a max PV input of 145 volts DC. Uh, the MPPT can handle between 60 and 115 volts. Uh, number of input strings is one. Uh, maximum current charge is 80 amps. Uh, the AC is going to be 120 volts at 50 or 60 hertz. Um, 40 amps. Uh, let's see, maximum AC charge current, 40 amps. Uh, the battery mode is going to be uh, 48 volts DC. Uh, it, can either it can take either lead acid or, or lithium. Power rating, uh, 3,000 3, watt to 3,000 watt inverter. Uh, let's see, and then it just has some stuff about the, uh, the environment of it all. Um, it's altitude, keep it below 2,000 meters. Operating temperatures between 0 and 55 degrees Celsius. Display is uh, an LCD plus LED. Protection class 1, uh, degree in protection, an IP20. Uh, communication, Wi-Fi, and GPRS, which are optional. And then it has the, the passcodes, uh, pretty much saying that everything was okay with it. Uh, let's see, the back has absolutely nothing, except for there are two hangers right here. So that's where we're going to be hanging this thing on the wall. So that should be pretty easy. Oh, no, yeah, there are two screw holes at the bottom, too. So I'll need to make sure and... Screw it in there as well somehow because the next thing we're probably going to do is connect this EFG 48 volt battery to the grow watt and uh, and get stuff turned on Okay, now that I've had a little bit of time to read over this manual All I really want to do is this is just a really really preview video of of what this grow watt can do so I'm going to go ahead and uh wire the battery to the grow watt and turn everything on and we're going to see what the display shows and see if um you know see if the grow watt actually turns on it's going to have to be multiple videos of of all of this so uh, you know be prepared for that and there might be some videos in between you know because i got 
some other things I need to review. But we're gonna go ahead and wire this up and just turn on the grill watt, turn on the battery, and see what happens. So let's go ahead and wire it up. First of all, glasses, because I don't know, I mean, this battery says it has a, uh, a built-in resistor, uh, but 48 volts, we're looking at a big spark if something goes wrong, so glasses. And then also I'm using, I, I just grabbed a couple of cables that I had, they're both black, but I went ahead and put red tape on the positive. Always make sure, if you're using the same color cable, uh, make sure that you have some sort of indicator knowing which one's positive and which one's negative. Especially working with 48 volts, you don't, you don't want to cross these. Uh, that would be terrible. So I'm going to wire the inverter first, and then I'm going to put them on the battery. And uh, then we'll turn the battery on, then we'll turn the inverter on. So here we go. Okay, this thing, this thing is completely turned off, so there shouldn't be any kind of spark whatsoever when I touch this. Okay. And it also says that there should be a communication port between the two, so we're going to go ahead and just do the RS-485. To the BMS. And the dip switch on the battery should be set to one. So one should be on and all the rest should be off. We just did that. All right, let's go ahead and turn the battery on. We're gonna go and flip the circuit breaker of the battery. It's now on. That means this should have power. So let's go ahead and turn on the grow watt. Here goes nothing. <gasps> All right, it actually turned on. I got a green flashing light. And I really don't know what, we got our output at 120 volts, our battery's at 52.6 volts. So that's what we have going on right now. So this is what happens when you first plug it into a battery. Is this screen right here. And we got a green flashing light so I think if you hold down the enter key, it takes you to the menu. Um, we need to change our battery. We need to change it to lithium. Flooded user. Lithium, let's do that. And this is the specs of the battery. See, this is what I don't know. Hmm. I got a fault. So let's go ahead and just change it to user for right now. So, oh, whoops. We're going to have to get rid of this beep too. Let's change this to user. I 
All right, and then the inverter just shut off. So, why do you think that happened? Might have been because of this communication error. Let's go ahead and take this out. Because our battery is, it's got three lights up, so we've got plenty of power to just be running this on idle. And you know what? I wonder how much, let's see what the idle consumption of this, of this inverter is. All right, the idle consumption is 0.9 amps. All right, let's see, now it says point, yeah, 0.87, 0.88, 0.88 times 52.6 equals. So the, uh, the standby consumption is about 46 watts. I went through the you know the initial setup of this grow watt now. Um, there's a lot that I need to learn about this all-in-one unit. Um, again, like I said, I've never worked with grow watt. I've never worked with all-in-one units. There's about a million settings in this grow watt that I need to go through to make sure that they're right. I know a lot of them have to do with charging and. If it's uh, if you want it to be 120 volts or 110 or at 50 hertz or 60 hertz, all those all that stuff can be set in here. Um, even the beeping, I'm gonna get rid of that beeping. I, I don't know which one it is, but I've watched videos of people saying, "Turn off the beeping." That's the first thing you should turn off. Um, but what I really wanted to do in this video was to unpack this grow watt and wire it up to a battery, show you the internals. Turn it on and show you what happens. Um, the communication and stuff, that's going to be for another video. So uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about uh, the GrowWatt 48 volt all-in-one inverter, please leave them in the comments below. As of right now, I probably know about as much as any other Yahoo on the street. So. So don't get too complicated or in depth with your questions because I will be looking up everything. Uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And uh, if you like my content, uh, please consider subscribing. It really helps out. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.